I'm a wee bit weird than that. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Glasgow! This is only the second time I've done this, and as you know, I start off with a wee list, then I go off on a tangent. I want to tell you what a beautiful sight. Yes. Look at all the wee beautiful bare faces. Yay. It's beautiful. Yes. There are two exceptions in the square today, but you can't have everything. <laughs> Is there anybody here that's in their first rally ever? Yes. Well, welcome to you because you've been brave. Yay! Clap for that man, because he is no longer a sheep. Yay! I hope you feel like I did when I went to my first rally at the Parliament. I was wandering down with a friend and I saw some people standing there. And we walked over and I realised I met my tribe. Yeah! I grew up in a family seven with beautiful parents that worked hard. And my mother used to say to me, Catherine, don't tell lies because you'll be known as a barefaced liar. <laughs> that used to be this what people thought. But this world's all upside down now. The barefaced people tell the truth. And it used to be, if you counted sheep, it was a very serene thing to do. No more, it's a nightmare. <laughs> right, the government, our government, they've never cared for us, they've always abused us, but right now, they've declared war. They've declared war on us. And we are innocent, but we're not stupid. They've done a psychological attack and they've ruined the mental health of millions in this country. They've got old age pensioners, of which I am one. They've got old age pensioners running about in masks. They can't breathe. Their glasses are all steamed up and they fall. Shame on the government! They say they're going to have a public inquiry about the deaths in the care homes. Oh, whoop de do! What's that? What that is, is political speech for a cover-up! Are we going to stand for this? Or are we going to draw our line in the sand? Well, put up your hand! and show that everybody has got to take part in this. They've got to tell their neighbours, their family, their friends, love the sheep and waking them up. The government are using language, refuseniks. Does anybody know where that word came from? That's right. It was used in Soviet Russia for Soviet Jews, they were give, taking away their freedom of going to Israel. Okay. Furlough? Is that a prison term, folks? Of course it is. Lockdown? Another prison term. Do people not get it? They want us to stay in our box while they live off the fat of the land. There's been a lot of talk about unalienable rights. How many do we have? Has anybody got that answer? How many are? There's 20. And I've brought them here for you today. I want you to see what they stole off us. I want you to see what we need to take back. I want you to learn them and look and see what everything they stole from us. And you know the worst part, we let them. Yeah. 
On the 23rd of March last year, we toddled off home like sheep because we thought they were taking care of us. Well, we know now they were not, they're not interested in us. So this war that the government's declared on us has been done under false pretenses, just like every historical war has been started. It's no different from history. I had a meeting with my GP on Thursday. I don't wear a mask. I've been refused access to the waiting room. So I phoned him up and says, I feel as if you're refusing me medical care. Oh, I got an appointment. So I turned up for my appointment. My GP came out dressed like Coco the Clown. <laughs> she had pee, 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 all over, everywhere. And I said, you never told me it was a fancy dress party. I would have, I would have got dressed up too. She says that I'm a very opinionated person. I'm not. I'm an informed person, just like all of you here. I've never met so many informed individuals because you know it all and you're right. You know where this is going. You know this build back better. The great restate. It's not for us, it's for them. We're all, they're gutting the economy as we speak. They're devaluing our currency so as they can push us all into poverty. Yeah. And then what are they got to do? Oh, you'll get that universal credit. But remember, it's basic. But what the GPs didn't realise, they've gone on it too. <laughs> so, we all need to join together, all of us. We need to all go to every meeting that our feet can take us to, because we have the power to stop it. Yeah. All of you. When the video of the shop went viral, I didn't know what that was, but anyway. <laughs> I got letters from all over the world. I got letters from uh, Vietnam, Thailand, New Zealand, all over America, all over the UK, and know what they say is, my video gave them hope. And I was overwhelmed, totally overwhelmed, then I realised how much suffering is in the globe today, and we must stop it. Now, Scottish people, I've got to tell you, we're getting a problem with the knee situation because they're still on it. You just need to get off your knees, get on your feet and march. Peacefully, you've got to march, peacefully. But really, folks, we see crowds out here and they're all celebrating because they've won a cup. Well, I want to give a challenge to every football supporter in Glasgow. If you love your family as much as you love the beautiful game, get out here, stand with us. We need you. In fact, that challenge is for every football supporter in the whole of Scotland because see if they want that beautiful game with a pint in their pie they better get out here because there'll be social distance for life I've only got one minute folks I I've brought a wee prop do you any idea what this could be? It's not Sturgeon's head, unfortunately. <laughs> this is my raincoat. I will take no emergency medicine. I will take no PCR or lateral flow testing. 
I see this raincoat, this raincoat I am wearing in the rain to keep me dry. I will not put it on to keep my neighbour dry. Her health is her problem. Do not consent. Get up on your feet. Football supporters, get off your knees, get off your couch and join us. Thank you.